This morning, I'm going to speak to you about something very powerful, which is how to live above fearful times. You know, how to live above fear in fearful times. How to live above fear in fearful times. First, let me say this to you. The Bible has said to us that as we come to the end of this season or this time, the Bible says perilous times will come, meaning that difficult times will come. As a matter of fact, if you backtrack to some of my messages I spoke at the beginning of the year, towards the end of the year service, I said the Lord showed me clearly that dark times are in the future, but the light of God is going to rise up strong to us. So we're not surprised, we're not perplexed that dark times are coming. Maybe we're shocked of how it's come out, we're shocked of how it is, but the truth is that God has actually told us that these dark times will actually come. It's there in the Bible that the dark times will actually come. And, you know, it's amazing because the Bible even says it this way. The Bible says men's heart will fail them. Like, men, men will become exhausted. They'll become drained. They'll just exhausted. It's amazing the things when you watch on, on, the, on the television, when you read the papers, what's just gone on in our world in the past couple of months just because of this, of this coronavirus just running around the world. But we thank God that there's no name higher than the name of Jesus Christ. So as dark time comes to, to across the world, what you want to ask yourself is this. How do I live above fear in fearful times? Let's look at a great story in the Bible. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 in verse 22. Matthew chapter 14 in verse 22. And just for you to know, um, by the 845 service, we're going to have children and teens experiences, you know, going on life. So, you go to the, if you want your children to, you know, you want to, because this is tough for children to watch. So you want to just get them ready so that you can put on the television, put on the, you know, and they can watch that for the kids. So Matthew 14 verse 22, the Bible says, and straight away Jesus Christ constrained them, his disciples, to get into a ship and to go before him. And the Bible says, why he sent the multitudes away, he sent the multitudes away, he went into a mountain apart to pray. And when he was, when the evening was come, he was there alone. And the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. So the, the ship was going against the direction they wanted. Just like right now, things are going against the direction that we naturally will want. Right now, we will not want to be at home, want to be in church, but things are going not in the direction. On tomorrow, kids will be at home instead of them to be in school. The Bible says, and in the watch, in the fourth watch of the night, and you know the Jews had the, the, the night, the watches start from 6, 6, 6 p.m. to 6, 9 p.m. and 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. and 12 p.m. to, you know, so it starts that way. You know, the Bible says, during the watch, Jesus Christ walking on the sea to them, it was in the dead of the night. Hallelujah. It was in the dead of the night. Watch this now. In the dead of the night, they couldn't come to where Jesus Christ was because the wind was contrary. But Jesus could come to where they were because he had all the power. You know why I'm saying that to you right now? Right now, the wind is contrary. Maybe these things are taking a toll on your health, taking a toll on someone that you love. Maybe you are even watching from a, a self-isolation. Maybe, what do they call it? Maybe your finance, your business has gone down because of this thing. And you're wondering what is going on. What I want to say is this. At the darkest of the hour, when you can't seem to approach God, God is actually walking towards you. Listen to me. It's not just your prayer. God is actually working towards you. They could not help it. Jesus Christ began to walk towards the boat. Imagine such love. Imagine such grace. They were in a ship and they were helpless. Jesus did not have a ship yet to walk towards them. I'm saying so to you because you're wondering what's going to happen right now. Just know something. Jesus is walking into the boat with me. Hallelujah. In the darkest of the hour, in the darkest of the season, What's going to happen is this. Listen, I'm not going to sink. Jesus is going to step into the boat. And once he steps into the boat, this boisterous wind will begin to cease. The Bible says that when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. They were troubled. They were like, oh my God. Because whatever we don't understand begins to confuse us. The Bible says it's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. That's what I'm going to. They cried out for fear. And straight away, Jesus spoke unto them and said, hey, be of good cheer. Be not afraid. Imagine, this is wind blowing. and <laughs> Oh my God, this is wind blowing. Watch this now. Jesus did not stop the contrary wind, 
what it did was to address their faith. There could be a widespread of virus and you're wondering, God, are you not going to step into it? And God is saying, while we're still working on that, my word to you is this, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I know you watch what's going on, you know, on television. You hear the news from your friend. There's even other news that is not true. There's so much fake news going on the place. But Jesus Christ, be of good cheer. He says, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. And that's why at the end of this service, we're going to end in a powerful season of praise and worship because we're going to be full of joy. Our joy is see, because joy is not something external. Joy is something internal. Happiness is dependent on circumstances and situation but joy is a force in the human spirit and regardless of what's going through in our lives and situations circumstances the joy of the Lord is our strength we are going to joyfully come out of this we are going to joyfully come out of this I love what Gloria Copeland said he said if the devil cannot keep your joy it can keep your stuff praise the Lord we are going to be full of the shout of thanksgiving full of the shout of joy in our houses concerning our health concerning our spouse concerning our finances and guess what we're going to come out of this with full-blown testimony if you believe it, say amen oh wow i'm preaching good already wow and jesus says be of good cheer it is i be not afraid is it not amazing that the way to kill fear is to hear what jesus christ says see many of you are struggling with fear right now and you're wondering how do I deal with fear? The way you deal with fear is very simple. Hear what Jesus has to say. You can't just conquer fear by saying, I will not fear again. That's not how it works. How, how, how does it work? See, just respond to Jesus. Jesus said, hey, be of good cheer. It is I. Next thing, be not afraid. And to show that he said those things, a measure of faith came into them. All of a sudden, the response of the people changed. How do I know that? Look at the next verse, Peter. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come on the water. He would have never thought about that five minutes. When faith enters into your heart, your response will change. That's what I'm going to. But how does faith enter into your heart? Maybe you're really scared that, oh, I, I don't want to catch the virus. I don't want this to happen. You know, and all of this. He says, be of good check. Just come out. And, and, and Peter said, Lord, if you be thou, bid me that I should come unto you. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down of the water, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Verse 30. Then something happened again. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. See fear again. And beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. And guess what? And immediately Jesus reached forth his hand. Two things. The wind that Peter saw, was it greater when he saw it or when he was on the boat? I don't think there was much of a difference. The challenge was this. Peter turned his attention because Jesus Christ said, come. He should be looking at Jesus. And instead of him looking at Jesus, he turned his attention from Jesus began to look at the wind. You know what I'm saying so right now? Because many of you, instead of you to turn your attention to God at this time, you're turning your attention to reading so much details about coronavirus, so much details about, you know, about this, and it's causing your faith to sing. This is, what, this is how I say it. Sometimes, the fact you need kills the faith you have. And you must be able to contain facts in such a way that it does not contaminate the faith that you have. Very, very powerful today. But guess what? Even when he made a music and was sinking, Jesus is terrible. He said, Lord, help me. And Jesus Christ took his hands and put them and pulled him out. Some of you, you're already in that situation already. I wonder, will I survive it? No. Don't think that way. Think the God way. You will survive it. God is, as you call upon the name of the Lord, he will pull you out. So let's keep, get into this. So one of the signs, so one of the things you must know is, you know, all the things we go through are just very similar. We have the bed flu. We have a, we had, we had bed flu. We had Ebola. We had SARS. We had Lassa Viva. Now Corona is here. And guess what? It's called V19. And as we go through this, we're going to have a testimony. It's going to come to pass and go. There are four fundamentals of fear you want to look at as you in the text. Number one, this is why you don't want to be afraid. So I'm talking about how to live above fear and fearful times. Number one, fear makes things worse. That's what the Bible says. Fear makes things worse. Hebrews 2 says, those who should through the fear of death 
have been made all their life subject unto bondage. Fear makes things worse. You don't want to get in that situation. Fear makes things worse. When you become so afraid, you begin to, you just begin to go crazy. The second thing that fear does is this. Fear begins to drain you. All of a sudden, you step at work. You are not productive. You are not focused because you are so afraid. That's exactly what happens when you are afraid. That's exactly what happens because, you know, fear begins to drain you. To emotional energy, it drains everything about you. The third thing is this. Fear causes panic and wrong decision. Fear causes what? Panic and what? And wrong decisions. Some people part of the world right now are beginning to have chloroquine overdose. That's what fear does. It causes panic and wrong decision. Maybe you've lost some money because of the panic and the, the, the downward trend in stock market. And this one, you're meant to hold your money. And you're trying, oh, I'm tired. And fear is causing panic and wrong decision. And the fourth thing about fear is this. You cannot be full of fear and be full of faith at the same time. No. You can be full of fear and be full of faith at the same time. No way. So once fear walks in, there will be no faith. When faith walks in, there will be no fear. And fear is based on information. It's what you're hearing. What are you hearing today? What are you paying attention to? And the last, you know, the most negative thing about fear is this. Fear makes you enter into a self-preservation mood. You're just like, oh, wow, I don't know what it is. You know, you know I, I don't know what it is. You just, you just have focus. And self-preservation, it's just online to failure eventually. All of a sudden, you become selfish, you become, and that's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to be full of faith. He wants us to be full of faith. So what kind of fear are people dealing with? Right now, I'm dealing with four kinds of fear. Number one, the fear of catching the virus. <laughs> Everyone like, oh, I don't want to catch the virus. But guess what? Fear ultimately attracts what is feared. The second thing is this. People are also afraid of sudden death. The third kind of fear people are dealing with is that people are afraid that maybe their children will get very sick. And I understand that. People also have the fear of business. And what? And financial collapse. Because as this takes place, there's a lot of things going on in the financial realms and companies are shutting down. People, you know, people are wanting to stay at home and contract issuing, you know, don't pay rent, that kind of thing. And it's affecting people's income. And all the fear is there. See, I'm not saying that you don't have the right to fear. I'm only saying that living in fear will be very destructive. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that you don't have the right to fear. I'm only saying that living in fear is going to be very destructive. But instead of living in fear, why not let's live in faith? Hallelujah. You know, I love the way the Bible says it. The Bible says, we walk by faith and not what? By sight. So what does that mean? Listen, my Apple phone it has an operating system that it's not Android. works with Apple. The phone is designed to work with this operating system because that's the design. And guess what I'm saying? Faith is our design. If you try to use this Apple phone with an Android, you know, application, it's going to malfunction. What am I saying so to you? As a Christian, if you are a believer and you begin to walk in fear, you're going to malfunction because you were not designed to walk in fear. He said, the just shall live by faith. We function by faith. We walk by faith. That's what we do. And why is faith important to us as, a, as believers? Number one, faith is a defense. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, that Bible says we should raise up the shield of faith. What is a shield for? Field, shield is for defense. It says your faith is a defense. There are things you're going to hear in the media. There are things you're going to hear in your world. But guess what? The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, our faith is the all-conquering faith. Our faith is powerful. Our faith can conquer sickness. Our faith can make a way where there seems to be no way. All you need is faith in God. Glory to God. This is the reason why you need to walk in faith. Listen, it's fear over faith. It's fear over faith. So I say, why is faith powerful? Because faith attracts supernatural help. When you read the Bible, you read about people that walked in faith and how angels came to their rescue. How the Red Sea opened up to them. Listen to me. In this season, there will be shortfalls. In this season, there will be panic. But the people of faith are going to see the help of God. Because their faith is going to cause God to come through for them. There's something about faith that makes God look at 10 persons and just come to you. Faith is so powerful. Oh my God. Faith attracts the help of God. Then the other thing is this. Faith connects you to God's protection, provision, God's promises. 
Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Bible says everything we have in salvation, we have by faith. So what is faith? Faith is simple. Just believing the word. Oh, wow. What is faith? Holding on to the word even though it's illogical. What does the word say about you? As I round up the teaching, I'm going to give you some scriptures to meditate upon. The reason why is that most people in this season are meditating more on COVID-19 than on the word of God. So they are hearing more fear than faith. And all I want to do is to spend some time and meditate on the word of God. Glory to God. Faith connects us to God's provision. Just, know, just three things you want to notice. Number one, someone says, okay, well, hey, God loves us. In fact, someone says, is this not God punishing us? Listen to me. This is not how God will punish us. And this is not about, this, God has nothing to, to do with this. But guess what? God knows how to use it for advantage. Glory to God. At the end of the day, this is going to become a full-blown testimony. Amen? Just for you to know. Because I'm like, how do I have it? Number one, nothing surprises God. We're the one that goes, hey, look at what is happening. God is not saying, hey. No, nothing surprises God. Number two, God has a plan. Even though Satan is working so hard to destroy lives, God has a plan. I love the way the Bible says it. It says, when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard. This is the way to say the scripture very appropriately. When the enemy comes, like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard against it. God has a plan. So you know why I'm not troubled? Because God's plan is that I'll be alive and coronavirus will be dead. I'm going to outlive the virus. Say, I'm going to outlive the virus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So how do you know that? Because God has a plan. And he says, the thought he has towards me, a thought of peace, not of evil, to bring me to an expected end. The third, is, the third thing is this. Nothing. Is outside God's control. To me, that's awesome. Nothing is outside God's control. As I conclude this, I want to say this. How do I become full of faith? Oh, wow. Because someone says, well, you know, Pastor, I, I really know I should be full of faith. I really know faith is important at this time, but I can't help it. I'm always panicking. I'm always afraid. I'm always anxious. You know, I'm just panicking. I'm just scared. I don't want to die. I don't want to lose my business. I've lost 30% in the stock market. I've lost this amount of money in Bitcoin. My, 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 I can't even open the store again. And, and my customers are cutting down the contract. Hey, how can I do that? That's the first thing. How do you become full of faith? Number one, cut off the fear feeder. What's the fear feeder? A feeder system is something that produces for, for, you know, for a pipeline. So watch it now. Ask yourself, what feeds my fear at this time? And let me say something. That means you have to reduce the excessive consumption of information on social media about the virus. That means you may have to look away from some things that's going on. What do you cut off the fear? The second thing is this. So when you cut off the fear, then that place becomes empty. You have to fill that place with the word of God. Let me give you some promises in the Bible that will help you. Hallelujah. Are you ready for this? Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Oh, glory to God. Mmm. Mmm. Those, those of you cooking in the kitchen and watching this, hope the food is not getting burnt yet. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 in verse 3. See, see what the Bible says. <laughs> Are you ready for this? It said, the Lord is faithful who would establish you and keep you from all evil. Oh my God. The Bible says, the Lord would establish me and keep me from all evil. I don't know what you're hearing, but this is what my faith is saying. Fear says, what does fear say? Fear says, don't worry, you will catch the virus. Faith says, the Lord will establish you and keep you from all evil. If the virus is evil, he said, the Lord will keep me from all evil. I want to say to yourself that the Lord will establish me and keep me from all evil. Praise God. The Lord will establish me and keep me from all evil. Somebody say, hallelujah. 
Isaiah 41, Isaiah 41, this is good. Ha. The Lord will keep me, oh, hallelujah, will establish me and keep me from all evil. Why am I not afraid? Because, don't listen to me, I use the sanitizers, I use the face mask, but my faith is not in the sanitizer, my faith is not in the face mask, my faith is in God, because God is keeping me. The Bible says, he that keepeth Israel, neither sleeps nor slumbers, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, he that keepeth Israel, neither sleeps nor slumber. The Lord is keeping me, praise. God my faith is in the ability of God and listen to me whatever God keeps can be destroyed whatever God keeps cannot be contaminated whatever God keeps cannot be infected my life is hid in Christ hallelujah Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 mm. oh are you there he says fear thou not do you see that hey God looks at you and says, don't fear Oh, when your children catch it, don't fear. Listen, you're going to come out of this stronger. That's what faith says. Faith says that we're coming out of this with a testimony. Faith says that we're not going to die in this. That this is going to work out for us. Praise God. He says, fear thou not. I am with you. Be not dismayed. He says, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. He says, I will help you. Some of you need some kind of help in this season. God says, I will help you. Maybe you're in a sick bed. Maybe you already have the virus. Us. he says I would help you we're not going to be paranoid we'll be helped by God hallelujah Psalm 34 verse 19 you know I want to write the scriptures down because every time fear comes up in your mind you can go back and say it you can go back and say it these are God's promises for your protection Psalm 34 oh glory to God <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> verse 19 it says many are the afflictions of the of the righteous it says afflictions means trouble or trouble sometimes he said but the lord deliver him out of what he says out of them all he didn't say the lord deliver him out of some he says out of them all listen to me it will come to pass that we'll talk about coronavirus in the past praise god so says how do you know because the lord delivers me out of all say with me i'm delivered out of this situation oh yes so tell you, because many are the affliction. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. I don't know what will happen next tomorrow. Many are the affliction, the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of all of them. Hallelujah. I'm delivered on Monday. I'm delivered on Tuesday. I'm delivered on Wednesday. Out of every single, hey, as I go to work, I'm delivered. As I go to the groceries, I'm delivered. I'm delivered. The Lord delivers me out of every single one of them. Praise God. As I stay in the house and do chores, I'm delivered. Praise God. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my shield strength if you believe that say amen oh wow oh <laughs> psalm 23 someone says why are you giving us so many verses i'm giving you so many verses because in case you want to go through the whole day you can have one verse per hour one verse for you know for three four hours this is powerful. Psalm 23 verse 4. Are you ready? David said, yes. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What, what, what is, listen, right now, the way there is death is like by walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You hear this amount of people have died in this place and this amount have died in that place. But see what David said. David said, this is not the first time this will happen. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. See what it says. He says, firstly, I will fear no evil. Say no more fear. <laughs> he says i will fear no evil i'm not gonna panic i'm not gonna be anxious why he says because thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me hallelujah i'm not fearing because i will have a good health sector i'm not fear i'm not, not fearing because uh, you know i'm well protected i'm not fearing because the lord is with me he has my rod he's my rod and he's my word staff somebody say hallelujah it says, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, say in your mouth, it's our fear no evil. <laughs> Psalm 91. Oh, glory to God. So many scriptures. Oh, yeah. You need to be soaked in the scripture at this time. Oh, the whole, cha the whole chapter you should just read. But see what the Bible says here. The Bible says in verse 5, Thou shalt not be afraid. Did you see the emphasis of all the protections that, see, notice something. The emphasis of all the protection starts with you not being afraid. 
It says, hey, the way you're going to be protected is this. Number one, don't be afraid. You know why? Every time you fear, you open the door to Satan. Every time you fear, you open the door to Satan. So it says, how do you close the door to Satan? It says, the way you close the door to Satan is by not being afraid. You close the door to Satan. That's how you close the door to Satan. You close the door to Satan by, by closing the door to fear. You open the door to Jesus and God to the door of faith. Hallelujah. No more fear. It's faith over fear. I want to encourage you. Tomorrow morning, Nigerian time, I'm leading prayer on Instagram. I'm going to lead prayer every day of this week. I'm going to speak faith into your life. We're going to post content full of faith. Look at what the Bible says here. It says in verse 5, Thou shalt not be afraid, Psalm 91, for the, for the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by the day, nor for the pestilence, that, see, for the pestilence that works in darkness, for the destruction, th this seems like the coronavirus is describing, for the destruction that works at the noonday. It says something very powerful in verse 7. A thousand shall fall at the side, and ten thousand at the right hand side. It will not come near me. Did you see that? He says, hey, the way it works is this. You would, you, it will not come near me. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's faith talking. Fear it says, I might just catch the flu. Maybe I have the flu. Maybe I have the virus i don't know if i have it oh no that's what fear says faith says it will not come near me praise god hallelujah Faith says it will not come near me praise god why do i believe that because if god said it i believe him and that settles it praise god hallelujah hey look at this <laughs> hey look at this in verse, verse 9 it says thou hast made the lord which is a even the most sad habitation there shall no evil before thee hallelujah hallelujah there shall no evil before me hallelujah there shall no evil before me there shall listen all of you watching just know there shall no evil no evil no corona no flu no asthma no money loss there shall no evil if it's happening in your business there shall no evil before you hallelujah there shall no evil before you Neither shall any plague, any plague, come near your dwelling place. Why? He shall give his angels charge over you. As you go out, angels are walking with me. I don't put my hands in the wrong places. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I, I want to put my hands in the place that's contaminated. I, I just feel a restraint because angels are keeping me. You know, I, I'm meant to be on the bus where there's a contamination. I just miss the boss because angels are protecting me praise god i should be in the meetings with someone that can contaminate me i just miss the meeting because i'm being protected i'm being protected is she is my faith is my shield angels are guiding me praise god oh wow so what do you do the first thing you do to be full of faith cut off the fear the second thing stay on the word the third thing is this meditate in the word what does meditate mean does it mean like Eastern meditation, just go hoo, empty your mind. Hoo, hoo, hoo. No, that's not meditation in the Bible. Bible meditation is that take scriptures and fill your mind with the word of God. Speak the word of God. Meditate, you man. As you, as you're in the kitchen going to work, demand yourself, no evil shall come near me. No plague should, let it be your meditation. No, no evil shall come near me. Glory to God. You, you sit down by yourself. No evil shall, you, you, you think about it. No evil shall come near me. You picture it that evil does not come near me. Picture it that the angels of God are guiding me. Praise God. Picture it. Hallelujah. Picture it that I'm surrounded with the legion of angels. And sit is trying to get in, but he can't get in because of my protection. Hallelujah. Remember what God told Job, uh, said about Job. He says, God, you, put, you built an edge around him. Praise God. Hallelujah. An edge has been built around me so you see people affected you know you say it can't come near me praise god hallelujah 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 i got this thing under control praise god hallelujah stay on the word what was you stay on the bible says if the same spirits and raised christ from the dead dwells within us he said to quicken our mortal body what does that mean he says if the spirit of christ can give life to a dead body that same spirit, if it comes in contact with sickness, can consume sickness. Hallelujah. Oh, that's big. Oh, that's big. Ha! The life in me can consume sickness. Hallelujah. The life in me can stop infections. I'm a custodian of eternal life. 
the life of God is in my head, is in my tongue, is in my mouth, is in my hands. Hallelujah. I'm a custodian of entire life. No, we don't contact the disease, we contact health. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are distributors of eternal varieties. That's faith talking. The Bible says one time Paul was, was putting fire together. And a snake, a viper, a, a very dangerous viper, went on him. People say, he's going to die. And just shook it into the fire. They were expecting to swell up and die. He didn't even pray. Why? Because the Bible says, if you shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not by any means hurt you. He says, you shall tread upon snakes and serpents and scorpions. Hallelujah. Hey, Paul had the authority, we have the same Holy Ghost. Hey, if God had the authority, we we have the same righteousness we have the same power of the holy ghost we are not going to walk in fear we are sure that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world what is greater in me is bigger than code v19 hallelujah the bible said the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are saved the name has been named upon me i live in that name i walk in that name that name is of my consciousness no evil shall come near me no plague praise god no plague shall come near my dwelling place myself my family our church our leaders we are saved hallelujah the angel of death said when i sit lord i will pass over you when we were baptized baptized into christ his blood has been spilled for us when he sees the blood rahata case to bahaya he says it will pass over hallelujah it's not you that coronavirus is looking for when it comes to you it's a passover it's a passover when it comes to your kids it's a passover when it comes to your spouse it's a passover when it comes to your home it's a passover in the name of jesus recession is not looking for you it's a passover he said, this day will I make a difference between them that serve me and them that serve me not. We we'll serve a living God. Meditate in the word. Don't only meditate. Sometimes faith can be understood sometimes. Praise God. Some say, Pastor, that means I can just go ahead and just go and do crazy things. You know, and just touch people. And I'm not saying be stupid. I'm going to say we're going to act our faith out. And the last thing is this. How do you stay full of faith? Number one, cut out the fear. Number two, stay on the word. I give you scriptures. Number three, meditate on the word. Number four, speak the word. Number five, be full of praise. Number six, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost say, no, no, don't, don't go there. You know why? He says, the reason why I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death is because you are with me. So if you are with me, you will direct me. Follow the lean of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And for all of you that are in business and wondering, oh, wow, I've lost money. Things are not going well because of the coronavirus. Job twenty two twenty nine 29 speaks to you. Go back, go, go there, get, get that. Job twenty two twenty nine. 29. It says, when men say there's a cast down, it says, we shall say there's a lifting up. Are you, are you ready? It says, we shall say there is what? A lifting up. Let me tell you something. When you are full of faith, <laughs> We are seeing the opportunity in this situation. That's what faith does. People that are not full of faith and fear, they move into self-preservation. They say, they're thinking of, Am I, let me protect myself. Let me protect myself. Let, let me just do this. No, no, no. People of faith says, hey, I'm the light of the world. I'm blessed to be a blessing. How can I be a blessing? Because, listen to me, we understand it is not for us. It is for them. We are called to help them. Hallelujah. We are not the one that contact the virus. We are the one that help those that have the virus. So we're not going to move into a self-preservation mode. Rather, as a church, we're going to help people. If people are hungry, we're going to give our food. We're trying to stock up to give our food. The same thing with you. This is not the season for you to just say, I'm just going to fold my hands and just, no, 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 no. Listen to me. I've told you many times, fear and stinginess and self-preservation comes from a place of what? It comes from a place of fear. But if you're full of faith, there's a time to release. See opportunity, step out in faith, release and believe God and be a blessing. Why am I being a blessing? Because I know that it's not for me, I'm a blessing to them. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. How do I know if I'm in faith? There'll be strength and hope. How do I know if I'm in faith? You become the light of the world. You become a blessing to people. Listen to me. This time and the future time will provide an, a large amount of season for incredible generosity because there'll be so much people to help 
And the last thing is this. There'll be so much opportunities right now. Are you seeing the opportunities right now? Because fear keeps you on all you've lost. Fear keeps you on the opportunities that's available to you. Praise God. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go ahead and pray together. Anyway, you are lift up your hands. I want to speak God's word over yourself. Speak God's word over yourself. All the things I've said to you, all the scriptures. Oh, speak God's word. Psalm 23, Psalm 91. Speak it over yourself. Go ahead and speak, speak it over your children. Speak it over your spouse. Speak over your business, over your finance. Let's speak about our country, Nigeria. Speak over Lagos State. Let's speak over the whole globe. Let's intercede for other people. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Limando Rahaske Barate Hanto Koshita. Praise and glory and just give him praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you because of divine protection. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for divine preservation. In the name of Jesus Christ. No evil shall come near us. No plague shall come near our dwelling place. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that, that everyone connected is safe. Hallelujah. We thank you because of a, a medical advancement that's producing a cure for this sickness. We thank you because the power is broken over our country, over our cities, over our nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Italy. Masote Bracatasa. We pray for those in isolation and encouragement. We pray for the medical officials, oh God. They will have wisdom, you'll preserve, you'll keep them. We come against the aggressive death rate that's raging. We come against the aggressive death rate. We bind it, you spirit of death that's raging all over the world. We come against your influence in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak God's protection upon your home, upon the things you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come against fear. We command fear to leave you. We that you be full of faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Choir, will you come up? I, I wanted to sing one song or two and just, you know, w w worship the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just wanted to, I, I wanted to, it's a, it's a powerful time of worship. I sense the spirit of God. You know, and let me say something so you can, if you have bread and wine anywhere you are home, take your bread and wine, bless it, read First Corinthians over it, and eat the bread and wine. Let's believe God that we're partaking of the body and the bread of the Lord, the body and the blood of the Lord that is there. Take Psalm 91. Teach your kids Psalm 91. Teach them Psalm 23. Speak it over them every day as they wake up. Speak over your house help. Speak over your colleagues in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God.